Oh, that's what's going on. So that's really quickly. Work. Ooh. Done. Another short, sharp, and delicious intro to Massive Joe's Weekly Word, episode 157, Eve Ross. Yes. What's happening, baby? Uh, not a lot, mate. Not a lot. How's your week been? I feel like like we, we work next to each other. Yeah. But I feel like I haven't really seen you this week. I've been sitting next to your week. I know. It's one of it's been it's been one of it's been, it's been a busy week. I'm there from nine to five. It's the end of the it's month. It's now Thursday, so it's, it's been it's been three days. It's been it's been a bunch of time. Anyway, mm. jam packed episode of Massive Joe's Weekly Word for you guys this week. Topics of discussion. All right, so we got back in stock. New products coming soon. What's up, Massive Joe Show episode sixteen? Aesthetic biomechanics. That sounds like a made up word. No, it's Ask the name Neve. of a new video series. Ask Neve. Let's get straight into a big knee, boss. Back in stock. First topic of discussion. Back in stock. Neve. Core heart extreme. Uh, just hold on a second, bro. I do not know if you know, but if you don't know, now you fucking know. This is officially some of Robbie's finest work. Because, let me just, let me back up a second. Is he meaning for you to be pushing it back like that again? Yeah, no, no, he is. He just, he gave me the new product, because so, uh, story, background story for the viewers. Weekly Word episode 155, as you guys saw, Rob came here into the studio at MJHQ mm -hmm. and cut the hair live on camera. And he said to me, and, and then I, I had to go to the UK, yeah. like straight away. So I didn't have, and he said to me, he said, man, look, like it was difficult to cut in that studio because like there's not a lot of, he was behind me and you guys can see the depth, like there's not a lot of dis distance. So he was kind of like cutting like fucking T-Rex mm. and couldn't get the angles and shit. So he said, when you get back, come see me straight away and I will like add my, you know, do my finest work. Fix up for you. And so I went to the chop shop last mm. Friday, as a matter of fact, so this is now almost a week, mm. a week half fresh. And I saw Rob and his finest work. Nice. And so he told me like how to style it and he gave me the proper product. Uh, he, uh, he's got me using the Shiner Gold uh, Clay. Yes. In the actual gold tub. Shout out to Shiner. Nice. And this shit's on fucking point, man. Look at it. Look at it. Look at that. Look at Delicious. That. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Delicious. All right. First topic of discussion. Mac and stock. So you got Core Hardy Scream. The powder. Core Hard Extreme back in stock. Core Burn Ultra in all three flavors. All three flavors: the mango, the pineapple, strawberry, the raspberry lemonade. All finally back in stock. Core Test in Primal Punch. Core Test in the OG Primal Punch back in stock, and we got a fuck ton of it too. Thank goodness. ISO 100 all flavors, all sizes. All flavors and all sizes across everything. ISO 100 back in stock. Spider Hydro Shred all flavors. How many flavors now? Six. Six flavors. Spider Hydro Shred back in stock. Your favorite. Uh, pineapple. I would have to agree. USP Labs Jacked 3D or Jacked or Jack, Jack 3D. 3D. Jack 3D back in all, uh, I was going to say all sizes. Let's go the one size, which is the 30 serves. Back in stock in all flavors. Uh, Mars and Snickers high protein bars. Both the Mars and the Snickers are both back in stock. ATP Science Everything. All ATP Science Everything. The pills, the powders, the potions, the creams. And Kodiak back Attack. Back in stock. Kodiak Attack. And the pre-workout for my good friends at Kodiak. Attack back in stock in mm -hmm. all flavors. Next topic of discussion: new products. Hit them, baby. So we've got a new flavor of Core Test. Oh, oh, oh. Blackberry lemonade. And I'm excited about this because Core Test is still head and shoulders above the rest of every other test booster in the market, in my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. But the one thing is always is the taste has always been a bit. Mm. You know, I haven't been too bad. It's not too bad, but it's not good. Mm. The Blackberry Lemonade, I actually tried some uh, at, at Body Power in the UK, mm. and it's the tits. Delicious. It's really that good. Um, really, really good. Mm -hmm. So if you, I mean, if you like the Primal Punch Cortez, fuck it, stick with the Primal Punch. But if you don't like it, Blackberry Lemonade is probably going to be right up your alley because they're completely different flavors as well. Mm. So. Yep. Excited for the Blackberry Lemonade called Test. Inspired New Suitables Ember. So this is uh, inspired. Uh, I don't even think they call themselves New Suitables anymore. Oh, really? I think they just call themselves Inspired. Anyway, uh, creators of Devastate, Devastate White Diamond, the pre-workout that you guys know we are massive fans of here at Massive Joe's. Ember 
or 3MB3. Why the fuck do supplement companies do that? Well, it's the same with Jack. No, but Jack did it first, and then all these other supplement companies are like, we're going to put fucking numbers where letters should go, and it's going to be cool. Which is annoying it's when you're trying cool. to search for shit. It makes it difficult to do fucking SEO <laughs> and yeah. the hashtags and all the rest of that cool shit. Yeah. Anyway, 3MB3R, a.k.a. Ember. Should have just called it fucking Ember. Yeah. I'm pissed about the name, but it's actually a really good fat burner. It's a powder form fat burner from Inspired. Uh, 16 active ingredients in this fat burner. Covers a lot of bases when it comes to, to fat loss supplementation. Very, very cool product. And comes in four very unique flavors mm -hmm. um, that, uh, that are interesting to see. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the market for a new fat burner, definitely go and check out the all new Inspired 3MB3R. Uh, coming soon. Next topic of discussion, Neem. Coming soon. Hit him, baby. Uh, Tim J Apparel at TMJ Arade. Uh, I I gotta go. I gotta go get one. Training tells. I, I was gonna bring this every week. No, because I was you gonna do bring it every one fucking in, and then week. we started shooting, and I was I didn't even know. You're the one in here yelling everyone to come in. Yeah. And you fucking forgot everything. Because no, I want to Instagram story the shit. Can I go get one? It'll take me two seconds. Though. I literally know exactly where they are. I'm gonna be back. And we're back from that short presentation from our sponsors. You can keep talking now. Uh, so yeah, so as I just said, we've got the TMJ Arrayed Training Tower. Okay, now, if you don't know, now you know, because Dilip is about to pop on screen some of the classic images of some of the greatest of all time basketballers, definitely Hall of Famers, yeah. coated in the OG Gatorade NBA towels. Mm -hmm. Now that you guys know, let me introduce the TMJ Arrayed training towels. Oh shit! Oh shit! I'm sorry, because being a basketball, mm -hmm. uh, basket and basketball fan, and like, I'm so excited about these. I'm, I'm just gonna go to the gym and fucking wear it like that. You've never even taken a towel to the gym in your life? No, I do. I take the, the original Massive Joe's ones. But this reminds me of like my basketball days, man. Fuck. Just do I'm know. so excited. So right. excited. So we also got the uh, those drop in about a week, by the way. We also got the messages micro scale. Yep. Open them up, man. Show them, show them, show them, show them. We got some, man. We got some cool shit for you guys, man. So the micro scales, they're effectively they're supplement scales. So sesame boom so you can weigh out your supplements they're not um they're not going to do well they could do like nuts and stuff but mm. the, i think the um capacity is the capacity is 500 grams so you could even weigh some food on not there. legal for trade what does that to mean? be honest i don't know what that means anyway micro scales also about a week away uh we got the fill and go funnels so ooh, oh, there, there you we go. go also about funnels. a week away and so obviously yeah. got the the bottom little bit that you can do there it goes into your drink bottle or shaker. Yep. Um, you've got the opening at the top. The bottom and the top, man. Obviously, where you put the powder into if it wants to open. There we go. Um, I thought you were strong. And the beautiful oh thing about boy. this is you can take, uh, if you had, let's just say, your uh, pre-workout and a shaker, yep. you can fill this up with your intra-workout and go to the gym. As soon as you're drunk, you pre. Open it up straight into your shaker. Are you trying to tell me that you can fill yep. and go? You can fill and go, yeah. Well, that's, why, that's why they're called fill and go funnels. Move on. Works perfectly. And we've got the MJ body tape measures. These are cool, man. These are epic. Measure the biceps. You know what's going to happen right now, don't you? What? Are we going to have a measure off or no. what? No, we're not. No, he doesn't want to. All right, I'll measure yours quickly. All right, all right. Are we doing this? Yeah, we're looking very thick and juicy at the moment. Unpumped though. I don't like doing measurements when I'm unpumped. Hold on, we need to get this back <laughs> on the screen. No, right. stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready? Alright. You fucking... What are you doing, I'm mate? Because well, you fucking flew him around like a fucking wet fish. Yeah. We're going, centi we're going centimetres. Oh, fuck's sake, Neve. Have you tested, tried and tested these? Yeah, I did. we measured the last... Yeah, well, they arrived yesterday, so we got in the warehouse and right. we, you gotta get, you got to put that one up high. Oh, it's on the wrong side, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to confirm for the viewers. All right, you ready? Is, is, that, is that your peak of your bicep? You see right there. I don't know. Is that, is that where it needs to be? 
This is, this is important men's business right here. Is that good? 45. Give a flex. 45. 45? Yep. 45 and a half, 45 and a half I'd take it. Centimeters, what's that in inches? It's like 18. 18 without a pump, I'll take it. Too big. Pump those bitches up Too to big. fucking 20s. 20 inch arms in men's physique. Do you imagine? Uh, anyway, that. those will also. <laughs> we're getting carried away. Uh, body tape measures also dropping in about a week's time. De Novo Utopia, also in about a week's time in uh, four flavors. Team J Apparel at nine forty A frame, new colors. Also in a week's time. Next week. We're actually here as well. They just need to be launched. Team J Apparel arm blasters. Uh, also next week. Once mm -hmm. again, they're here. They just need to be launched. Yep. A whole bunch of uh, merchandise and apparel and supplements and cool shit heading your way, uh, guys. In about the in, in about a week. Mm -hmm. Next topic of discussion. What's up? What's up? Hit him, baby. Uh, my what's up of the week yeah. is red, white, and boom pre-workout. Ooh. Mm. We uh, had a tub open for um, the trial before you buy last mm -hmm. month, red, mm -hmm. uh, red, white, and boom. Mm -hmm. So if you actually go probably go in any retail stores, you'll probably still be able to grab some. Yep. Um, but I've been uh, just grab trying, some try. grabbing some to try, and yep. I've used it a couple workouts this week. Yeah. And yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah. It's, it's very a very good, good pre-workout. It's my go-to for legs. Still. Yeah. Like it's still my go-to for legs. Three mm. quarters of a scoop. Because mm. I can't do the 400 megs of caffeine. Yeah. No. But I fucking love it. Uh, and yeah, definitely because I've been trying to limit my uh, caffeine intake during the day. Yeah. So obviously if it's hit me, it's starting to hit me like a ton of bricks as well. Because fucking of, of, of it's going to hit anyone so. like it. It's red wine boom, man. It's going to hit anyone like a ton of bricks. So no yeah, that is my man. sup of the week. My sup of the week uh, is actually protein powder this week mm -hmm. because I've gone back to post-workout using Core Iso yeah. in uh, chopped pepper. I've got two flavors actually. Chopped peppermint bark and salted caramel. Mm -hmm. And they are fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you actually understand how, for, especially for an isolate, how good Core Iso is. Because I tried, yeah. that I, I bought in a tub of a, a new brand protein that we don't stock this morning. You know the one I put yeah. on Bosch's desk. Yeah. And that's an isolate as well. Um, Where did that come from? Relatively, yeah, I got contacts. Relatively popular. I don't know if you know, but I've been doing this for quite some time. Yeah, but that contact doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, <laughs> listen, it doesn't matter. I've still got contacts. Um, and uh, so that's an isolate, mm -hmm. right? And th it's shit. Yeah. Like it's watery and it froths up and it's, it's shit. Mm. Core ISO is fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't froth. It's got a thickness to it, like it's almost like it's like a blend. Yeah. The flavors are the tits. Mm. The ingredient is is like isolate protein, natural uh, flavors, sweeteners, no colors. Mm. It's like, and that's it. And these other fucking isolates have like ingredients lists that are like this big with forty five different fucking mm. ingredients. It's like that's not an isolate, man. Yeah. What is that shit? Delicious. So my what's up of the week is core iso, mm -hmm. and if I had to choose a flavor. Probably chopped peppermint bark. Shit is the tits, man. But we do have caramel yeah. and peanut butter toffee mm. in stock, so. Oh, we don't have chopped peppermint. I'm not sure. We, well, no, we must, because I got it from the warehouse. There you go. Yeah, anyway. Next topic of discussion here. Uh, Massive Joe Show, episode 16. Oh, episode 16 of the Massive Joe Show just went live this past week. We actually recorded this past week, went live this past week. Uh, just you and I in this episode, man. Yep. The topic uh, for episode 16 is focus on yourself. Um, and I was very happy with it. We, we recorded, I, because when we went in, I was like, ah, oh, it's just me and Neve. I think it'll go for maybe 30, 40 minutes. We ended up talking for an hour and 15. Mm. And it was really fucking good. I, I finished it and I was like, man, that was a good episode. Mm. And I usually don't feel that way about podcasts. I haven't listened to it back yet, but I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Some good shit that we discussed in there. That there were some good points that came out. We haven't touched on in any podcasts thus far. Yeah. So make sure you guys check it out. Just search for The Massive Joe Show on your favorite podcasting platform. It's We're on iTunes, Spotify, uh, Podbean, SoundCloud. We're on YouTube. We've got a separate YouTube channel for The Massive Joe Show as well. Um, fuck it. Just Google The Massive Joe Show. Mm -hmm. It'll come up mm -hmm. and listen or watch that shit. Yep. You guys will enjoy it. 
Next topic of discussion here. Aesthetic biomechanics. Okay, our new video series here on the Massive Joe's YouTube channel featuring a Massive Joe's sponsored athlete, Nathan James Williamson, is alive. The first two episodes are live. Actually, by the time this video goes up, probably the first three episodes. But the first two episodes are how to perform a crucifix row and how to perform a three-phase lap pull-down. Now, a bit of background for you guys. For those of you who don't know much about uh, Nathan James Williamson, uh, Massive Joe Sponsored Athlete, IFBB Pro Open Pro Bodybuilder, uh, also runs Team Future Muscle, aka TFM, which is his uh, personal training and coaching business. Nath is a, I would go so far as to say a wizard when it comes to biomechanics and just the way the body moves, how to manipulate different, um, different movements based on your own biomechanics to target different muscle groups. And this new series, Aesthetic Biomechanics, is about just that. It's about using different exercises or different techniques with conventional exercises that you may have not explored before to target different muscle groups to help you build an aesthetic physique. Mm -hmm. uh, so for those of you who are interested in building an aesthetic physique, as to as opposed to a performance-based physique, mm -hmm. uh, and you're concerned with changing the way that you look, this is definitely a series that you want to be tuning into and adding the exercises and the exercise variations to your workout regime. Mm -hmm. Static Biomechanics is live on the Massive Joe's YouTube channel. Next topic. Uh, ask Neve. Of discussion, Neve. Ask Neve. Eight questions for Ask Neve this week. Mm -hmm. Good, gives you opportunity to go balls deep. Matthew. From Bathurst, New South Wales. How's that for a YouTube username? Fuck, I've been around for a while. Um, on their website, De Novo Utopia has a new label. Do you know if the taste has changed again? Have a good one. I don't believe the change of taste. I just think it's a new uh, taste has changed. I think it's just a new label. It's a new label. So the flavors are exactly the same as the last batch that we got towards the end of last year. Um, the only Ooh. thing that's changed are uh, the... Are you watching Weekly Word I as am. you're recording Weekly Word? I'm watching last week's episode. Bro, that's Weekly Wordception. Inception. That's in Weekly Word. That. Yeah. It's too much sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, no, so the flavors are exactly the same. We have four flavors on the way, uh, just new labels. Alistair just Topping. Just do Devon Foley's. Okay, we're going to do Devon's? Yep. So Devon Foley. <laughs> hey, guys. Devon from San Jose, California in the US of A. What are your thoughts about compression clothing slash gear when it comes to training and recovery? It seems like it's everywhere in the NBA and showing up more and more in the gym. Um, I always wear compression shorts. I've got 2XU mm. when I'm training legs. You do. Why? Uh, mainly just to keep my muscles warm in between yeah. sets yeah. as the main sort of thing. It's, yeah. it's, I don't think... Um, yeah, I guess that's that's really truly the only reason I use it is just in between in between um, yeah sets and stuff, or if mm. I have a longer rest break, yeah. is just to keep my legs warmer mm -hmm. whilst training. Mm -hmm. I I think that you can't argue with the science behind compression clothing. Mm. Like there's there's actual science that proves that it does help with I'm not so sure performance, but definitely with recovery. I, I used to wear them when I played footy. Which I used to wear them when I used to play basketball. 10 years ago, obviously. I, 15 I used, years ago. used to wear them, um, the skins. Yeah. The OG skins, skins. skins was the OG. They the OG were like skins. the first company to do it. So I used to wear them back, uh, yeah, for all training. And I used, to, I used to wear, especially because we used to train yeah. um, uh, up in the north. Yeah. But it was very cold, obviously, in the middle of winter at 7 o'clock at night. It yeah. was fucking freezing. Yeah. So I used to wear the full leg skins while I was training. Yeah. Um, mainly, yeah, just 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 prevent any sort of muscle um, muscle soft tissue injuries, yeah. and also just to yeah keep your legs warm and just I think just keep yourself warm really yeah. to be honest. Absolutely, I am I'm similar. I train in um, compression always when I train legs, and to be honest, now that it's like cold and it's winter, I tend to wear compression. Uh, I wear TMJ three quarter um, tights pretty much every workout to mm. be honest, just for the heat. Yeah. Stay warm. Yeah. It's fucking cold in the hit center at night at the moment. I don't know if you noticed. I've got, I trained legs cold, last man. night and I've got my Nike Pros on. Are you, still, you still got them on right now for the compression. These are three quarter compression ones. Alistair Topping. Hey guys, Alistair from London in the UK. Best pre workout nootropics. I love acetyl L tyrosine. I wonder what else you recommend to add to my stack. 
Uh, my favourite story has been choline. Choline and huperzine A is definitely an awesome one-two punch. Um, N-acetyl-L-tyrosine or L-tyrosine and mucunipurians, which yields L-dopa, is also a really good one-two punch, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to feeling of well-being. Uh, neurofactor is a really cool new nootropic ingredient that we're seeing pop up in a lot of fat burners and pre-workout supplements at the moment. Um, Acetyl-L-carnitine, even so, crosses the blood, bar blood brain barrier, helps mm -hmm. with mental focus. Mm -hmm. Those are probably the, the top six, Yeah, just off the top of my head. Anything else you can think of? No. Yeah, I'd go with I'd go with the, any of those out. Uh, mm. Alastair, Alan Kim. Hey, fellas, Alan from the six, Toronto in Canada. Man, we're going worldwide this episode. Mm. Go Raptors! Recently, my wife went through breast cancer surgery, and I came to quick realization that the degrees of separation of knowing people affected by cancer is small. Here in Toronto, there is a cancer awareness fundraiser, 10 kilometer run in October. I decided to run it and I'm shifting my training to long distance cardio. I'm worried about my gains. I'm still lifting two times a week, heavy full body while running four days. What advice uh, would you have to help minimize muscle loss during the next several months? I'm running this race no matter what. So I understand some loss is inevitable. Well, first and foremost, Alan, I hope that your wife uh, is okay mm -hmm. and recovered from the surgery um, as best that she possibly could. And I agree with you 100%. Like, there's not one person I can think of that I know that hasn't had some sort of exposure to someone with cancer. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's one person I know that hasn't experienced it. Sadly. So I don't think there are any degrees of separation. There's probably one one degree of separation. If you go from like, yeah. you know, have you had cancer? No. So then it's one degree to knowing someone who has. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Fucked. Look. Uh, <coughs> so Alan wants to know how to maintain the gains. You can't. While well, long distance running. Yeah. That, that's just what it comes <coughs> down to, unfortunately. Um, and he's aware of that. He's, yeah. He said, you I mean, know, like he knows, to minimize, he min I mean, minimize or mitigate the muscle. Minim minimize muscle loss yeah. is uh, things, for example, such as drinking your BCAAs while you are running. Yeah. Sipping on that. Keeping your protein intake higher. Keeping in a caloric surplus. Yeah, in caloric is surplus. Be a big one. So it, it'd be just a case of also trying to track um, how much you're um, burning, yeah. perhaps. Even though they're not really that accurate, yeah. it'd be good to sort of get a general. If, I mean, even if you look at uh, do a bit of research mm. and find some scientific studies of all right, this is how many calories are generally burnt from let's say forty five minutes of jogging mm. or running, mm. and then find out how long you're doing it for, and then all right, probably I'm burning an extra six hundred calories now on top yep. of what I was before, so I probably need to chuck in another meal, and that maybe all maybe is as simple as doing yep. is drinking beef blades before and chucking another meal in or even like a carb meal in or a, a yep. protein and carb shake straight after that you would have normally taken just to put you back into that calorie surplus. Yeah. That's probably two main things. Yeah. Um, and that's the main the main thing, Alan, to be honest. So you're lifting two times a week heavy. So you're doing pretty much maintenance resistance training. So the main thing it's gonna come down to is your is your diet, is your macronutrient intake. So if you can keep yourself in caloric surplus, keep your protein intake sufficient, you are gonna maintain most of your gains, even while doing all the long distance running. I've got a question for you though. Shoot. How far do you reckon you could run right now if you had to go out and run? <sighs> like if you had to go for a run? Bro, maybe to the corner? I would, I would, I would not. I'm too heavy. Mm. I weigh a 115 fucking. Ki I weigh 250 pounds. Mm. I'm not. I would, uh, and it's not necessarily the lack of aerobic capacity because I do a lot of cardio at the moment. Yeah. But it would be like the joints. My knees would hurt. Yeah. My hips would hurt. My mm. ankles would like. <coughs> it would be the pain of actually the high impact. And you got to remember, I got stress fractures in my back, mm. so I really should, shouldn't be running at all. But I, I would not be able to. I would, fuck, dude, like seriously, maybe I don't know, four hundred meters. I just want to throw a curveball. I, I just want to throw just a curveball and, here. Um, stop. I just want to throw a curveball. Yeah. Is it? It's only ten k's. Yeah. So I just only ten k's. Yeah. Reckons. 
I used to run 10k as a night just just for the fun of it. Yeah, back back when you were playing footy. You yeah, so what I'm saying though, what I'm saying though is it's not like you you're training for a marathon. No, but Alan's got he's got the right mindset. Like if I was to go, okay, I'm gonna when is it? It's October. In October, which is only five months away, I want to be able to run 10 kilometers non-stop in a, a respectable time. Mm-hmm. Like he started training now, five months out. Yeah. Or if it's the start of October, four months. Hey, it's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is... But he's got the right mindset. Yeah, just, like just, you, have just, to, you start okay, to train Okay, just it. hear me out. Because yeah. you're doing the thing, Goo, where you cut me in off without actually letting me explain my, my sentence. No, because, I, because we got the thing, man. I know what you're going to say before you say hey, it. Because what I'm saying is that you're, like not, you're, not going to, you're not going to start just running 10Ks a week. So no. the thing is, you probably may not actually be losing that much muscle as yep. what you think you will be. In my okay, opinion. I see what you're saying. Because you're not yeah. going to go out and run 10Ks every day for Straight five up. months. Yeah, yeah. You'll be you running... Work into it. Because you've got those apps. You can say, all right, in October 22nd or whatever the date may be, yeah. I need yeah. to run 10Ks. Yeah. So you've got stuff and you can just put it into an app and it gives you, all right, today we're running 300 meters. Yeah. So the thing I'm saying is, is if I don't think... You're not, you're not running 42Ks three times a week. You might be running 2Ks mm. a day for four days. Yeah. Which really, if you look at a lot of people, that may be... You do, mate. If you walk for an hour, yeah, twice in your comp prep, yeah, is your walking say twelve k's a day at six kilometers an hour, which is a general pace. Yeah, you've done two hours a day of cardio. Yeah, you've walked ten to twelve k's a day in your comp prep. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, it's not like you're running a marathon every single day. Yeah, and burning through that amount of muscle and I glycogen. See what you're yeah, is ten k's is is I couldn't run ten k's. As I said, I would struggle to fucking run to the corner. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be able to run to the corner. Mm-hmm. I tried to run a lap of the block the other day <laughs> mm. to warm up, and that was the worst thing I've ever done because I had to stop every 100 meters yeah, it's fucked. and walk. Yeah. So don't get me wrong by saying 10Ks isn't far. Yeah. It is far, but yeah. if you compare it to a marathon runner, which is the generally 42Ks, yeah, 42 yeah. Ks um, and yeah, you're not going to be running 10K straight away. Yeah. So I don't think it's going to affect you probably as much as you think it will do. That's a good point. I'll allow it. Thanks. Thanks for letting me explain. Ryan B01. <laughs> Uh, where's Ryan from? He's told us. Alice Springs. Ryan from Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. I was going to put my pants on. I'm going to be hot. Mm. I don't usually wear pants, but these khaki fused trackies are just so delicious. I had to wear them to work today. Ryan B01 from Alice Springs, Northern Territory. Hey guys, what was your worst injury and how long were you out for? What did you do to mentally and physically cope? Um, I've had two nose operations. Mm. From broken noses playing footy. Yeah. I've had a knee arthroscopy. Yeah. Which put me out because I was fourteen or fifteen at the time. Yeah. So the issue was is obviously at fourteen or fifteen you just want to be running and playing and This is football, yeah, right? Playing footy. Let's I uh, because no, I because I'm going there quickly. Okay, Let me finish. Okay, okay, okay. Stop cutting me off. No, mate. well because I think Ryan's talking about like in the fitness he doesn't want to know about before you got into bodybuilding. No, it's what he might be. He hasn't said. No, I don't think so. I think Alan just talked to us about running. Because I could talk to Ryan about my stress fractures in my back. Well, that probably back is your worst injury. Well, that probably is your no, worst 100%, injury. But then I go, okay, well, that's actually what led to my, to me getting into bodybuilding. And to be honest, I haven't really had any serious injuries, touch wood, hmm. since that. So, you know, my worst injury, well, fuck, I had like shoulder issues that put mm. me out for a couple of weeks, mm. chronic ones, but I haven't really had like a torn pec or a torn bicep or a torn ACL or some shit like that, mm. that I've had to really, you know, like there's going to be a three month recovery period mm. while I'm in this sport that I'm in now. Mm. I tore my lat and tricep, which oh. my worst. Can we get some, can we get some, uh, Dylan, can you put a photo up on screen? Just pull it off Neve's Instagram. It'll be on your Instagram, right? I've got my phone camera yeah. off. Well, yeah, I might That's give it to Dylan. Pop it up. That was bad. Dude. That was probably my worst injury as of late, if you want to go into bodybuilding terms. I remember how bad that was. I remember when, because we were at the, we were at the old HQ at the time, weren't we? Yeah. I remember you, you rolled into the old HQ with a, um, a sleeveless hoodie on, <laughs> and your whole side was mm. like black. It was my whole back side of my back. And I was, was like, was bruising bro. right down my lap, right down my tricep. Because I was there when you when you did the it was deadlift. Yeah, yeah. And you were like, oh, I didn't feel good. Yeah. And then next minute, yeah. you were like, yeah, bruised and fucking. Um, oof. the thing mentally is, uh, it really, as Joey's just said, it really depends on the injury as yeah. well. 
Mine wasn't a high, high level grade tear. Yeah. So I think like grade three or four is where you I mean, need it like. It fucking looked like it tore straight off the bone, to be well, honest. Well, it did look like that, but it, I don't know. I went and saw the physio. Yeah. And he just said, look, it's probably, it's not torn off the bone. Yeah. So the best thing to do is keep training. Yeah. So I kept training, mm. uh, but trained at like 25% for. Just like kept blood kept moving. Kept blood into moving into yeah. it. Um, rubbed Prototype 8 onto it by ATP because it yep. got fresh blood to it. The thing is, is when I need to be, I'm very fastidious. Sure, you can use that word. Perhaps. But I'm very onto the... Is that the word? Do you want to tell the viewers what that means? No. Because I think most people just went straight over their heads. So, um, like I'm just very on the ball with recovery yeah. when I need to be. Yeah. Such as icing, such as... Your attention to detail yeah. is good. When, when, there's, when there's an immediate consequence. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that's the thing that I focus on is, all right, I don't, and I don't know what, if that's because my mindset of like training mode of like, all right, I need to go train tonight. Something mm. turns into, all right, I can't train, so I need to ice and need to repair, like, like repair, fix myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing is do is, is with most injuries, um, there's nothing that you really can't, just going that you do, unless you're in a car crash or something like that, mm. which is a sort of a whole in body impact. Yeah. But there's never something that you can't do. I could still train legs. Yep. I could still train biceps. Yep. Um, I could still train like shoulders in some movements. Mm. I just obviously couldn't do any pulling movement or any tricep work because they were the two muscle groups I tore. Mm. But I could still train legs like like I normally would. It was hard gripping the bar, but I could still do leg press, still do leg extensions, hand, like any sort of machine work I could still do. Yeah. It was just putting my bar into the, the squat bar that I couldn't do. Yeah. So yeah, it's really just focusing your attention it's really that what you're focusing your mindset on. Yes. Are you going to sit there and be all devo because you have hurt yourself? Yep. Or you look at the positive and say, well, I can still train legs. My yep. legs, my calves are a weak point. I haven't trained calves in four weeks. Yep. It gives me four to six weeks to really focus on my hamstrings and my calves. Yep. And then go and hit legs three times a week. You're still hitting biceps. You still go and do a, a cardio session, whatever it may be, yep. on the days that you, you aren't training. Yep. Even if it's legs, right, you're not going to be able to do legs, but you can still do you can complete upper body movement if, yep. you've, if you've hurt your knee, for example. There's still something you can do. So you have to change that mindset away from like, why me? And like, why am I injured? And fuck, it sucks to, mm. all right, what can I do to get better faster? And exactly. look at what I can still do. What's within my realm of control? Mm. How mm. am I going to react? Yeah. Fuck, I need to go listen to episode 16 of Massive Joe Show, yeah, I think. Yeah. Corey Stokes. Hey, brothers. Corey here from the Central Coast, New South Wales. Thanks for taking the time to talk and hang out at the Sydney Fitness Show. You're welcome, Corey, man. It was great to meet you, brother. My question is, with the continuous changes in the supplement industry and business, do you ever see it plateauing and just becoming repetitive and companies doing the same thing and not seeing any real change in the supplement industry? Corey, bro. <laughs> <coughs> Welcome to the supplement industry. We're, we've been there for quite some time now. Yeah, it's definitely something. I don't something know if you've noticed, but most companies copy the fuck out of, out of each other. Yeah. Um, we get copied a lot on the retail end. Mm. And then on the manufacturing end, there's a lot of copying. On the branding, oh, yeah. There's copying everywhere. I it's mean, like any industry, though. But yeah, really. it's like anything. If someone brings yeah. out a nice car, yeah. that company is going to use features from that car exactly. to... Exactly. Like what a certain car would have done a push button start to begin with, and yep. now they're kind of standard, standard. In, in most yep. cars and yep. the mirror exiting kind of thing. But a lot of these kind of things that, yep. that like, all right, this company's doing but it. But that's just that's just forward development, yeah. really. But it's the same with the supplement you know, industry now, though. Yeah. Is is forward development with ingredients, forward development with. I mean, the Branding. most blatant ones really are complete knockoffs of retail stores or. Yep. Complete knockoffs of like brands, low brands yeah. or like you've seen brands formulas that, that are complete knockoffs and just like yeah. oh, man, brands that look identical, brands that the ingredient like the f even as much as like their Instagram photos are exactly the same yeah. like yeah. flat lays as a different company. So. Yeah, mm. all that sort of all that sort of thing. Gums thirteen. Hey guys, Stu from Ebblevale, South Wales in the UK. Another great episode of Weekly Word. Thank you for the kind words about meeting us at Body Power. You're welcome, brother. It was a good time. Good time. My question this week is, I've been told by my physio this week that I have a muscular imbalance between my tricep and my bicep. Don't we all? Mm. Don't we all? Probably everyone except for Phil Heath. Yeah. And maybe Ruley. Yeah. I think everyone is an imbalance. 
I can't fully straighten my arm. One of the things she said to do was to try and strengthen my tricep. What exercise and rep range would you use to improve tricep strength? Um, to improve tricep strength, probably my favorite exercise is weighted dips. Ooh, okay. With a heavy compound, able to be able to put a lot of weight through the actual tricep. Not really isolated though. No, it's not, but that's what I... I it's, a, it's a multi-joint movement, that one. Yeah, sure. but he hasn't, said to, he hasn't said he's looking to isolate it. No, that's a good point. He just wants to strengthen it. Strengthen the tricep. Yeah, I, I, I probably agree. If I wanted to work, if I had one... Dips or, or close grip bench? No, because I think too many people bring in their front delts and their chest with close grip bench. Okay, fair. I think you can, I think you can action and, and uh, move your body in ways to take those movements out of it. Yeah. Such as leaning forwards, uh, sorry, like the, the, you know what I'm saying, the feet saying. forwards, yeah. feet upright, yeah. staying upright, really engaging those triceps. Yeah. I think you can engage your triceps and then isolate triceps a lot more in that movement yeah. than, than front delt and yeah. chest. Yeah. Um, then obviously once you go from there, then it is just doing heavier work with like your, your tricep press down, your overhead tricep press, mm. French press, those mm. kind of movements. Mm. I think your best bang for buck though, mm -hmm. for actually increasing strength is, is tricep dips, but mm -hmm. what do you think? No, I would agree. I would agree from a strength base. For me, like I would look at it more holistically, Stu, and I would go, I'm just gonna prioritize triceps in my workout mm. regime. So I'd probably dedicate, if you're training arms together, I'd probably split that up and dedicate a full workout to triceps, just so you're putting more volume through them, you're prioritizing them, and then I'd look at the whole workout. So I go, okay, I'm gonna do the multi-joint movements, the single joint movements, the, hit, the different positions of flexion, TMJ extended hypertrophy, as you're more than familiar with. So I'd look at it more holistically rather than going, what one exercise and one rep range would you use to improve tricep strength? Because I think mm. that's too, uh, too focused, too short-sighted. I have to say, if you go to our website, we do have a good article on the, uh, what muscles, what exercise is, the muscles the most? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I um, it's, called. Uh, oh, it's the one with fucking John Cena. What's it called? Mm. Uh, keep talking. I'm going to find it. Whatever it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, it the other thing I just want to bring up, and I'm no expert and I'm no physio, and I'm not going to tell you if physio is wrong, but yeah. um, something such as well is uh, getting some um, like deep tissue massage and scraping, mm -hmm. um, trigger point release, uh, dry needling. Those kind of uh, stuff as well to try and I I, on, I don't speak to everyone about their imbalances, but I've never heard of anyone having an imbalance where they couldn't straighten their arm though. Mm. Have yeah, you? It is. This is the one. It's called uh, it's called maximum maximum muscle activation. There you go, Stu. Maximum muscle activation. That is some <laughs> shit. Zoom and focus. There we go. <laughs> maximum muscle activation training. So it's in the scoop on the articles part of the massivejoes.com website. John Cena in the top there, AKA knee V2. Mm. Um, and it goes through which exercises in particular What's the are the best. What's the yeah, so what triceps, the best exercise yielding the highest mean, which is gonna be strength, yeah. is actually rope extensions. Mm. And then cable extensions, which I'm thinking probably cable kickbacks, and then weighted dip. Mm. But they're pretty close between the three. So there's not much difference. Mm. Last question. Of course, it's going to our good friend, Pierre, mm -hmm. aka the Buff Bulba Cats. From Chester in the UK, what up, very big boys? A lighthearted question this week. As I fear I'm breaking up the bromance between you both with the philosophical questions lately. You are, Pierre. It's <laughs> causing me great anxiety and much mm -hmm. stress. If calories didn't count and alcohol was actually good for you, what would be your go-to food or drink simply because you love it so much? Be honest. Mine would be dark chocolate every time. I hope you're both having a smashing week. Peace out and stay massive. So what would be your number one food or drink or alcoholic beverage? Simply well, I because I can you nail it down to one. So Probably one that's really bad for me. I'm just gonna put down things that are bad for me, very bad. Uh, yeah. Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah, you're a big Krispy Kreme fan. But then on top of that, it's like pizza and stuff like that. Man, I go through phases, Pierre. Like, I fucking... Like, if you ask me right now, probably because I've just been craving it this week, I would go, like, wood oven, wood-fired pizza. Like two Italiano months, style. Like two months ago yeah, for me, it was Subway. Fun. The month before that, it was 
sushi. It changes, right? So there's never one food like this. I might go, that one, go, I eat. Might go like uh, burgers one week, or I might go like ribs one week. Like mm. it, cha- it changes, man. Yeah. But yeah, I'd probably enjoy a lot more food <laughs> than I currently do. Drink is feel good ass coffee. Yeah, no, but you still smash those. You don't let the I calories don't. stop you on those. I drink one. Of those. It's, it's not one too a day. High. One a day is one a week. One, one, one a day is acceptable. It's only thirty grams of protein, thirty grams of carbs. Oh shit, the bad. That's it. Big knee. Do you have anything else? No. That you would like to add before I tell the viewers to hit the subscribe button. Maybe if Pierre, um, instead of weekly word, if you had some philosophical questions, let mm. us know and we could answer them in, in the a massive podcast. Joe show. In a podcast. Yeah. We should, when Pierre was here, we should have got him on the Massive Joe Show. Yeah. He would have gone balls deep. Mm. Anyway, maybe next time. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to turn your post notifications on, both on your mobile, your cell phone, and your desktop PC, so you don't miss a beat when it comes to the Massive Joe's YouTube channel. Guys, that is Weekly Word, episode 157. And that's a wrap. Until next week, where we coming to and from me. MassiveJoe's.com. Thank you for tuning in to this video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Don't forget to check out our latest upload and our recommended video and be sure to subscribe to the Massive Joe's YouTube channel to stay up to date with all of our latest uploads.